Hi, I'm Brooke Haggerty, the food chick. Welcome to today's episode of For the Love of Food. Today, we're going to be talking about the big game. Okay, for the big game, the big game's coming up. We're all ready. Everybody's going to people's houses for parties. Everybody's saying, bring a dish. What are you going to bring? Well, you're still thinking about the fact that you're in that New Year's resolution mode. You know, new year, new you. You know, we last last episode we talked about, we did the Asian vegetable soup and the quinoa. Well, you still, you're still holding to your resolution. You're still going to the gym on Sunday mornings like we talked about, as well as a few other mornings during the week. What can you take to your friend's house that is going to help you stick to your resolution? Well, everybody loves chili, right? But not everybody loves all the fat that's involved with your basic chilies. So today, we're gonna to be doing a chicken chili verde. White chicken, all white breast meat chicken, tomatillo, fresh tomatillos, jalapenos, garlic, cilantro, avocado on the top. So this is a great dish that doesn't take you a long time to make that you can take to your friend's house. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with tomatillas. Tomatillas, um, they look like a little bit like a tomato. They come in a corn husk. It's a little more tart than a, a, a tomato, even though it looks just like a green tomato. So we're gonna peel these, to, those, to, these tomatillas and then we're gonna go ahead and rinse them off. But before we do that, we're gonna turn our oven on. We're gonna put our oven on bake. Okay, we're gonna put that on 350 degrees. That's preheating because these tomatillas, um, they're gonna need to they're gonna need to cook a little bit. We want to roast some of that tartness out of them. So we've got our tomatillas, and we're just gonna take our tomatillas and we're just gonna cut them in quarters. These are small enough, and they're gonna they'll cook down as well in the in the oven. That oven is preheating nicely. Nice quarters here. What the tomatilla is gonna do, we're gonna dress it with a little bit of um, avocado oil, actually. Um, avocado oil is an oil that I started using recently that I really enjoy because it has got a, um, it tolerates high heat, up to 500 degrees. So you can put it in a smoking hot oven, you can use it in smoking hot cast iron, um, and it's not going to burn. Um, it's beautiful, it's got night, if you see, the, I'll show you the color on it, it's nice and light and uh, in color, but it's rich in flavor, just like an avocado. And we're gonna be using avocados today as well in our recipe as a topper this afternoon. So I think that's good on tomatillos. We'll get those in the oven with, again, we're gonna dress them with a little bit of the avocado oil. And we're gonna generously salt these. We're gonna salt them and we're gonna pepper them. We're gonna use my favorite ingredients, as you all know, truffle salt. Generously salt these, because that way if we salt them now, we're, if, as we make our chili, we're not gonna, we won't add as much salt there. But again, the earthiness is gonna come out as it's roasting. And we're gonna put some lemon pepper on here. And we're gonna put a little, just a little bit of cumin, again, to bring out some smokiness, some earthiness, and a little bit of crushed red pepper. These are all ingredients that are going to go into our chili today as well. So why not start off, you know, this is our basics. Let's start the basics off with this. So let's, let's make sure this has got all of our tomatillas. Bingo. Okay, let me get my hands cleaned a little bit here. My oven's at 200 degrees right now, so we're gonna we're gonna put this aside. Just well, we'll go ahead and pop them in. We'll pop them in the oven because it doesn't hurt for them to go in the oven even when it's not up to temp. Once that hits temperature, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cook those tomatillos off for about 10 minutes, just till um, they start to get a little bit soft and mushy going. Okay, so you can't have chili without some very important ingredients: onion. Today I'm gonna to use a white, this is a sweet white Vidalia onion. I've already taken nature's covering off, nature's covering off from it. Um, we're also gonna be using garlic, we're gonna be using jalapeno, and we're gonna be using cilantro, fresh cilantro, 
fresh jalapeno, fresh garlic. We've talked about that before. When you can get items in fresh, so important to do that. Again, looking forward to uh, farmer's market season coming up shortly in just a few months. But now these are coming from my grocery store. Soon these herbs are going to be coming from my herb garden. And in future episodes, we, you will see how easy it is to do a beautiful little herb garden in your own pot. You know, I actually have three pots of herbs that go every year. And I start them as soon as that first frost is finished and they go straight through. I had, I had herbs this year up until Thanksgiving because we had such a mild fall. So I'm just gonna go and get my onion cut here. I'm gonna cut the onion into not small dices, but, but not crazy big either. You know? These, the onions don't, they won't shrink as much when they're cut, the, when they're cut this big. Okay, so we've got our onion. I'm gonna go ahead and put our onion in our pot. And I'm going to turn my pot on. And you can see the smoke coming off from there already. Oh, yeah. And our onions going right in there. Again, my new induction stovetop, courtesy of my husband. I love it. You can actually see the heat coming through the bottom of the pan. You know, somebody asked me if I was afraid of cooking with the, um, the induction. I told them that I wasn't because the great thing about this induction stovetop is you get that instant heat and then you can turn it down right away. So we're getting that nice char on there. You can see our flavors already coming out from the onion and the avocado oil. I'm going to add a little bit more avocado oil in there. Hear that beautiful sizzle. Okay, that's gonna cook down. We've got it on medium now. And we're gonna add garlic. Now in this re today's recipe, we're gonna be using a lot of garlic because you really wanna pull everything out you can out of chicken. You wanna get every last flavor that you can possibly get. Okay, our, our oven's up to temperature. So we're gonna go ahead and set a timer on that for 15 minutes. And start. So uh, anyway, we're gonna be using a lot of garlic because uh, chicken, especially when you, we're using all white breast meat chicken, all white breast meat chicken tends to be a little blander because it's not, you know, first of all, we've already got it off the bone. A lot of your flavor is, gonna, is, is coming for chicken is coming when you cook it on the bone. Today, we're not cooking it on the bone. We're gonna go ahead and get it off from the bone. It's already off from the bone. It's already been cut. I've already cut it up. So we need to infuse as much flavor into it as we possibly can. Okay, so while our onions are cooking down, we're gonna go ahead and get our garlic ready. Again, fresh garlic, we're just smashing it to get nature's packaging off from it. And then uh, these are going to be bigger chunks of garlic than what you would normally do because you, again, you want to taste that. You want to feel that. You want to taste that flavor and have it come out and get you. So we've got our garlics. We're just going to rough chop. We're going to be making this recipe that we're going to be using today. It's going to cook just probably, you know, anywhere between four and eight, depending on if you're using it as the main dish or as just, you know, a part of the meal, which if you're going to that big game, you know, Lord knows there's going to be lots of food there. Uh, there's going to be a lot, a lot of food going on. So probably, you could probably even get more than eight servings out of this, depending on how much food is at your party and, you know, how much everybody eats and how much you like it. And I, I have to tell you, this is one of my favorite recipes. So... Chicken chili verde doesn't usually last very long in my house. Okay, so we've got our garlic in there with our onion. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add our chicken in now. Again, this is all white breast meat chicken. that I've already sliced it up, uh, cut it up into uh, bite-sized pieces. And we're just gonna put that right in there. Okay, so we'll let that go. Get it all covered with the onions and the garlic because you want it to drink up the flavors that's, that's in there from the onion and the garlic naturally. 
So that's drinking that up. Now it's time to add some heat. One of my favorites, fresh jalapenos. Today we're going to be using two fresh jalapenos and both these jalapenos we're going to leave one of them with the seeds in and one without because I do want to get some heat out of this chili today. So just top, cut off my tops. Slice them down the middle. One of them we're going to take the seeds and the ribs out. And then again, because this is chili and we want to be able to see, we want to be able to see the flavors that are happening in here because we know that it's chili, we know it's going to be a little bit hotter. So instead of doing a small dice on this, we're going to do a little bit bigger of a dice on our jalapenos today. So about, you want to get about four or five strips out of each half. Okay, and then, so you got these nice long pieces, some of them with the seeds, some without. And again, we're just going to chop on down. Now, when you're doing this, be sure to wash your hands afterwards or not touch your face because you will burn yourself. Your eyes will burn, you will cry, you will feel pain, and I don't want anybody to feel pain as a result of food. Food is not about pain. Food is about love and joy and happiness and, and, and um, nutrition. Okay, so this is cooking beautifully in here. Okay, so I've got my chicken going in here with my onions, my garlic, and my jalapenos. And boy, does it smell good. Um, I'm, go I'm going to add just a little bit of liquid to this now, just a tiny bit. Um, because I, I don't want everything to get burned on the bottom. So we're just going to take a little bit of vegetable stock. Again, we're going to use our vegetable base, a little bit of vegetable base. And here, just probably about a teaspoon, just enough in the bottom there. And I'm going to grab my hot water over here. A little bit of hot water. Oh, about a cup here. So I just want enough that's going to be to go into the bottom, so I don't, so that everything's lifting off from the bottom and not sticking to prior to adding the rest of our ingredients. Okay, so we've got our vegetable base in here. Here we go, and also that it helps to cut the, the a little bit of the the extra heat that's coming out. You know, sometimes your kitchen will tend to heat up a little bit and uh, get a little smoky. So if you add just that little bit of liquid while you're finishing cooking your chicken down. Okay, so while our chicken is cooking, I'm going to take a look at our tomatillos, which look gorgeous. I'm actually going to crank those up just a little tiny bit. I'm going to crank those up to 450. Another thing that we're going to add to this, we're going to add fresh cilantro to our dish today. So I'm just going to, I'm going to pick this cilantro off from here because it's going to go in while we're cooking and it's also going to go on as a garnish. Uh, the gar part, another part of our garnish today is going to be fresh avocado. I love using fresh avocado. Um, it adds a nice creaminess to the top of your to the top of the chili and it takes a little bit of that heat away that we're that we've got in there from all of the jalapeno and we're going to be adding some more crushed red pepper in there as well. Okay, so we've got some cilantro here. I'm going to put a little cilantro in with our chicken and then we'll talk about the avocado. Oh my gosh, this smells so incredibly good right now. We'll turn that down to medium. Let that go. Let's talk a little bit about avocados for a second. Avocados are absolutely wonderful for more than one reason. Um, a, they are very, very good for you. Um, they are a great substitute for butter on sandwiches. They are a fabulous topping. Uh, you could make guacamole and use it as a spread instead of mayonnaise. Um, you can actually make avocado mayonnaise as well. Um, take your, I take the avocado, put it through a food processor really quickly, add a little bit of avocado oil to it, and it, gets, it turns into a nice little spread, season it with salt and pepper. Absolutely fantastic on your sandwiches. Avocados um, do not as soon as you take them off from the, they don't start their ripe, start their ripening process till they come off the tree. 
So you're going to see avocados in different stages in your grocery store. This is a green avocado. It's got a little bit of brown and black going through it. But if you see this bright green on here, that is an avocado that's really, really hard and that is not ready for you to eat, okay? That is too hard. It, it, it doesn't have the sweetness that it needs. So you don't want an avocado like that. If you, if you don't have any give on it, put it back. Keep it on your, on your cabinet and on your kitchen counter until it has ripened a little bit more. Now this one, as you'll see, has got a little more give to it but not quite as much as we want it to. So next we've got this one, which has got a lot more give to it. Okay, you can see when you push it down. And then here, this one is really ready because my thumbprint is coming off from it. Avocados are absolutely delicious. So that, but we got a little green over here, so we're not gonna use that one. We'll use this third one that I talked about. So the avocado, once we open this up, you're gonna see a gorgeous green color on the inside and the pit that's in there. Really important when you're cooking with the avocado or using avocado, um, leave the pit in the side that you're not using. Um, I eat half, a, leave the pit in the half that you're not using. That way it won't green, it won't turn brown. It'll keep that, it'll keep that nice gorgeous green color. Pop in a Ziploc bag, it's good for a day or two in your refrigerator for you. Um, the, we'll have an episode that's gonna be completely devoted to avocados because there are so many wonderful avocado recipes out there. You saw how I cut this. I just took my knife, put my avocado down flat, and turned it. And I'm gonna twist, bingo. Look how beautiful that is. Looks like the inside of a pear almost, doesn't it? So we're gonna use this, we're gonna slice the avocado and then we're gonna scoop it out and that's gonna go on top of our chili. So I'm gonna put this here for right now. Now we're gonna add another ingredient before the tomatillos, and that is white beans. These white beans, these beans happen to be, this is a great northern bean or other, a northern white bean or a cannellini bean. Cannellini beans are white, they're a little bit milder flavor. Uh, these are canned, these were canned and low sodium canning and then I drain them. I did not rinse them at all because I want to use the liquid from there into the, in the chili. Now you can also use a, a dried white bean. The dried white bean is gonna to come to you, it's gonna look like this. It's in its packaging, just a dried white bean. Uh, easy directions on here, you can either so soak them overnight in cold salt water and to soften them up, or you can do them in warm salt water, let them sit for about an hour and a half to two hours. Um, but again, you do want to use some salt in there, but you're not gonna have as much sodium this way as you will with the can. So that's why we have, you see, we have not added a lot of sodium to our dish already because we've already got it here in our beans and what we added onto our uh, tomatillas as they were roasting. We're gonna check our tomatillas in a minute, but again, back to our white bean. We're just gonna scoop our white beans in here. Again, we're gonna use that liquid I'm gonna put half in and I'm gonna stir it really good. Oh, this is gonna be nice. And the beans are gonna be the star of this chili. You know, again, we're talking about, you know, lightening things up. So the beans are gonna be a little bit more of the star of this chili than the chicken. The chicken's gonna take a little bit of a, of, of a back seat but it's still gonna have great flavor and you're gonna have that protein in there, again, for the folks in your group that say they have to have the protein. But you could very well do this, this recipe without the chicken in it um, and just add, I would add, I would double the, the, double the tomatillas that you're using. Okay, so we're gonna stir this again. Okay, so we'll stir there. We're gonna put a lid on it. We're gonna turn the heat up a little bit. Let the, the juices from the beans infuse into the, into the chicken and into the onions and, to, and into the garlic. And let's take a look and see what we have here for, oh! Ho, ho, ho. These are gorgeous tomatillos. Let me just put something down here. They are bubbling, they're brown. They're fabulous. 
Oh my gosh. Look at those. Wow. Absolutely. You see how much they've softened up? You saw how hard they were when we, when we first cut them and now they're nice and soft here. Oh my gosh, they smell wonderful. Let's see what's going on with our chili action real quick. Okay, we've already got a nice little bubble on here. So we're gonna add our tomatillas. And one of the reasons I did the tomatillas on the foil is because it makes a nice easy package to carry over to my stovetop. And I can just empty them straight down in. Again, easy. You know, cooking doesn't have to be difficult, okay? It shouldn't be difficult. Cooking should be an enjoyable experience. It should be something, that you, a learning experience, and you should be able to enjoy every, every step of it. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna turn these in here, give them a nice stir. Oh my. The flavor smells fantastic. I am going to do a little taste test. Make sure our seasoning is where it needs to be. Oh, wonderful heat. You taste the garlic. You already taste the tomatilla flavor from the, from the roasting in there. And this is just the broth. The garlic, the onion, it's all marrying together really nicely in there. So when, once we add so, some more cilantro to that, it doesn't even need any more salt. Okay, we're gonna turn this down to medium, put a lid on it and let it go for a couple minutes. Now, I'm gonna get set up for something new. Something I've not tried before, I've seen a recipe for it. It looks quite amazing and I think that we're all gonna enjoy it. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I said we were gonna try something new. And I saw this online a couple of days ago and I said, oh, that's something I really wanna try. And so today I'm gonna to try it on television. So these are gonna be Parmesan prosciutto straws. So not quite the healthy alternative that we've been looking at uh, so far today, but a nice little treat because everybody, every once in a while you need a little treat. So what I have here is I have a piece of puff pastry. The puff pastry is going to get, I'm gonna roll it out a little bit. We're going to uh, brush a little butter on there. We're gonna put a little bit of shredded Parmesan, fresh grated Parmesan cheese on there, and then some fresh prosciutto. We're going to wrap it up in a str into straws, and then we're going to bake it. So I'm gonna put my oven back down to 350, where it was before. Oops, bake. 350, start. Okay, so that's gonna go back down to 350 for us. So we're gonna start with our rolling pin and we're just gonna roll this puff pastry a little flatter than what it is right now. Whoop. Slightly floured surface, by the way. And there's a little bit of flour on the puff pastry. When you get the puff pastry, it comes to you it comes with a little flour on it. It's a frozen product, so you want it to thaw out a little bit. Um, thaw it out either in the refrigerator, which is the best way, or you can thaw it out on your countertop. I did a little combination of the two today. Okay, so I rolled it out just a little bit. It's just a little bit here. I'm gonna grab some butter and my pastry brush. And get this nice and buttered. We're gonna take a little bit of Parmesan cheese onto our puff pastry. Just gonna sprinkle it throughout. Again, no set measurements on this. Just sort of to taste and to make sure that this is something that we're actually gonna like. We've got our prosciutto. Now I bought a packaged prosciutto. Uh, so he's got, you've got, pa they're paper thin. And speaking of paper, there are paper in between each slice, okay? So you wanna make sure that you remove that paper before you put it down. 
And the great thing about this is if you pull a little bit too much off, you can eat it. So we've got here, I'm just going to pull these prosciuttos apart and then place it down in strips on my puff pastry. Again, no measurements here. Just do everything to, to taste, to your desire, to how you want it to look for you. My camera crew is looking very happy right now because they get to eat when we're finished this. Okay, so there we go. We've got that there. We need to cut our dough down. I'm just going to use my crinkle cutter because I do not have a pizza cutter. So I'm just going to cut this down like this, each row. And then we're just going to twist, not the dance. We're just going to twist and see what happens. And these are going to go onto a baking sheet in the oven for about 10 minutes in a 300 in the 350 degree oven. I'm going to spray this with a little bit of baking spray. A little bit of baking spray there. Whoops. We're going to grab our butter once again. There's a little bit in here. We're just going to brush the tops of these. I'm going to turn our chili off. We're going to put a little Parmesan cheese on there. We're going to pop these in our oven for about 10 minutes. I'll set a timer for seven minutes. and see what happens. In the meantime, chili, cooking down, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we've got, we're gonna pull out of our oven longer, a little longer than 15 minutes, but we went 25 minutes. Look at these gorgeous prosciutto puff pastry straws. They're gonna, it's gonna go gorgeous with our chili, which is over here simmering. We're gonna serve, pull our chili out. A nice big bowl of chili. Nice big bowl of chili. We're gonna top it with our avocado. That again, we're just gonna slice right down here. We're gonna take a spoon to scoop that avocado out for us. Scoop our avocado out, place it right on top of our chili, serve it with a big puff pastry prosciutto straw next to it. There you go, folks. Look at that beautiful, beautiful chili with the avocado, the puff pastry straw. Oh my, I gotta get chicken in there, some tomatillo, some avocado. Spicy, hot delicious, low calorie, and it allows you to eat this beautiful prosciutto straw. Oh my gosh. Flaky, crusty, buttery, cheesy. Mm. I can dip it right in there. Again, my name is Brooke Haggerty. I am the food chick. 